Hi, this is Larry Jordan, and this is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.2. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to use the amazing new 3D text feature in Final Cut Pro 10. So, there's one more thing we want to talk about, and that is 3D text. 3D text is its own category. It's inside the text, and there are two categories. 3D text, which is what we see here, and 3D cinematic, which has got some backgrounds associated with it. I'm going to work with the 3D text. Inside Final Cut, we can't control the animation of the 3D text as precisely as we can or as flexibly as we can inside motion. So when you're working with 3D text, my recommendation is always work with a piece of 3D text which is already giving you the effect or starting to give you the effect that you want to have. In this case, I'm going to work with Rotate 3D and just drag it on top. Select it, type Control D to change the duration, and we now have a longer clip. Notice that the clip itself rotates, and if you look really, really carefully, given the text that Apple is using, you can see that there is a slight 3D effect in there. I don't know why they picked this particular piece of text. It doesn't really show the effect well, so let's go up to the inspector, go up to the text, and let me just show you what the categories are. We've got basic, 3D text, 3D text lighting, 3D text materials, and then the standard glow and drop shadow. These three are new. We take a look at basic. I'm going to change this to something which is a little bit easier for us to work with. Let's pick something which is uh, friendly and cheerful. Let's work with Cooper Black. I like thicker faces for 3D because it shows us the 3D more, um, more efficiently, more effectively. These controls are exactly the same except text alignment um, is now in um, the advanced setting. Same settings, they're just hidden so that you don't stumble over them if you don't know what you're doing with text. When we go to 3D text, depth controls, let's just find a place where it's rotated. Depth controls, watch the edge of the R. I'm going to grab this and drag it. And notice that now it's extruding the text to give us a little bit of extrusion, a lot of extrusion. We'll just hold that right about there. The depth direction, when I was playing with this between backward, forward, and centered, I don't see a whole lot of benefit, one versus the other, so I just tend to leave it on centered. Weight, I leave that alone because it changes it from being a very thin font to a very thick font. I tend to not mess with it. Front edge, now this is neat. Let's um, go to here, and let's zoom bigger, and... When I set the front edge, let's just hide the basic. When I set the front edge, we have all these different shapes. Let's, um, let's zoom into 100%. There we go. Notice the edge of the character. If I set this to square, notice that the edges are sharp. If I set the edge to bevel, we have a slight rounded edge, beveled edge. If I set it to double round, Notice that now I've got this etched setting in there. I could set it to bevel ring, which is really a very cool effect because we just see the edges of the characters. Or we could set it to, oh, say, a rounded ring. So I'm changing the shape of the 3D text. We can have the back edge be the same as the front, which is the default, and how the corners are handled. I'm going to take this back to bevel. So now we've got this nice beveled look. We've set our characters. We've set our depth. Now it's time to play with some of the lighting. When I click on lighting, I can say light this from above, and now it's lit from the top, or light it from below. Look at how the shadows change. Or I could say give me a dramatic top left lighting or dramatic top right. I'm changing the position of the lights to make it the text look the way that I want. I'm going to bring this in from, oh, the left-hand side. And you can see that the light comes in from the left. So the left edges are, are lit, and the right edges have shadows on them. We can adjust the intensity. We can even change the environment. What this means is that I can have a series of reflected images 
In other words, how, look at how I'm using different colors to reflect off the characters. Or I could have uh, the sense of a parking lot. I can change. It's, it's like the, the light is bouncing off the parking lot and hitting the characters. Or we could have spotlights hitting it. Or whatever other the color of a wood. So I'm going to go back to the color characters because it's kind of neat. What's also interesting is that as I rotate the characters, note that the colors are changing as I'm rotating the lighting. There's a lot more we can do with this, but it's one of those things where just play with it and see what catches your eye. The one that I really like, one of the, the settings that I really enjoy playing with, is farther down. It's under materials. What materials allow you to do, we'll set this to single, is you can say, I want to change the material to, say, concrete. Or I want to change the material to be, oh, um, a grunge green. Look at how the textures are changing and how the light picks up that texture. We've got all these different categories, 12 different categories. I want to take a look at, say, a thick plaster. And look at how the light picks up all that, that edginess, that, that sharp edge texture to the plaster. Well, we can get even more carried away. With multiple, I can say, I want to set the front to be this distressed concrete. Then I want to set the front bevel to be, say, uh, plastic. We'll go with a nice blue. And notice I've now got this edge here. And now let's go with um, a green grunge. And look at how, as I play this, let me just pull this over here. Look at how my characters have got one piece of texture on the side, a different around the edge, a third around the front, and I'm still playing with my lighting to make the lighting look the way that I want it to look as these rotate into space. What we can do with 3D text is just amazing, and you're already seeing effects from companies like FX Factory and Motion VFX that are providing additional templates that leverage the 3D text capabilities inside both Motion and Final Cut to create a wide variety of 3D text that we can use in all of our projects. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new features inside Final Cut Pro 10.2. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 155. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.